that might to go out, and they do. And the race gets underway, and it's immediately Charles Hall that gets his car in front as they head down towards Rich's corner for the first time. Leon Morel in second. Alistair Smart slots into third place there as they turn their way through Rich's corner for the first time. Smart then third. It looks like the 11 car in fourth place is that of Philip Brown as they turn their way through the Wilson hairpin. That's the number 93 car, the red car you can see of, uh, of Stephen Larkham as well over from the other side of the Irish Sea. Big moment there for 11, which was Philip Brown, who's uh, been contesting the full season. He's fifth in the championship. He had a big old slide as he went through Palmer. He's there in what his fourth position. He's made a good start. Doug Carter dropped away at the start a little bit from his good qualifying this morning. He dropped to fifth position, but to expect perhaps Doug Carter to challenge uh, as the race goes on in his class A machine as the field come through um, and out of the Augie's corner. Making progress there was Andy uh, Fido, who was near the back of the grid, which perhaps we may not expect. So can Andy Fido make progress during the course of this race? He has had a fourth place finish this season. So uh, look out for car number 12, the 60 year old from North Somerset making progress. Top two already making quite a break there though from Alistair Smart in third position. Philip Brown fourth as I say. And Doug Carter is dropping back a couple of positions to fifth part way round this uh, opening lap of the race. And 15 cars uh, we have, and they sound magnificent, of course, powered by uh, scrap bike engines. Here are the top two, then. It's the Mattel leading of number 77, Charles Hall, from in second place, number 35, uh, Leon Morel. And they are through Murray's, the tight left hander at the end of the lap. There you could see the Six going for Valerie Gordon, a spinner is number 12, that's Andrew Fido. Well, we're asking whether he might be able to come through the field, Josh. Well, if he's going to do that, he's made his life a little bit harder. Yeah, he had gained a couple of spots, but uh, more than that has been lost for the lead of the race. Leon Morrell was challenging there into the hairpin uh, at Wilson, the Justin Wilson hairpin. He was challenging Joe Hall uh, for the lead of the race. Here they are, so Morrell going really well here in the radical uh, SR3. Um, RSX, uh, Leon who turned uh, 41 uh, last month I think, he's challenging then Charles Hall, the 2020 champion, Leon Morrell the 2021 champion, they're absolutely nose to tail here as they go up to the left hander at Hamilton, the uh, the Mattel which you'd think might have a little bit more downforce but Morrell dives up the inside, a massive uh, lunge there from Leon Morrell to take the lead of the race quite extraordinarily. Yeah, I wasn't really expecting that, and I don't think Charles Hall was either. So Leon Morel has gone through to take the lead of the race then. They're on to the Bentley straight now. So Charles Hall, we're gathering points. his thoughts here. Of course, they score points within their individual classes, so they're not actually racing for points, but they are racing for pride and the overall win, and each will want to have the outright victory here. And Charles Hall just had a look at the inside there as they went into uh, the... Brundle Nelson complex that time but decided better of it I think all the chances will come though as they now head through quorum round towards the end of this second lap of the race it's number 35 Leon Morel that leads the way then from number 77 Charles Hall who raced in uh, single seaters to quite a high level uh, for a long time and has come back into club racing uh, more recently and is not far behind as they come across the line this time is setting himself up for a move into Richie's corner is he going to get through on the inside yes he is so Charles Hall had lost the lead for about half a lap there he is back in front at the start of lap three not for long because Leo Morel comes back down the inside and he goes back through so the Mattel that's a bit quicker in a straight line a bit slipperier through the air with a bit more power and again therefore powers back past by the time they get to Palmer but Leo Morel Perhaps uh, a bit more confident through the infield section here. Eventually on the brakes into the hairpins. Let's see if he can do it again. Down towards Angostini and Leon Morel then down the gears. This time Charles Hall is able to at least uh, hold him off at the left-hander Angostini. But of course it was Oggies, wasn't it, last time where Leon Morel made that move in? That's right. So that's coming up very shortly. Heading through Hamilton now. Then it's into the right-hander here at this part of the circuit well this time through it just follows Charles Hall through 
And as they're about to head back onto the uh, Bentley straight through Williams there, it is still uh, the same order as they head down to Brundle and Nelson. There you can see a bit of a gap this time opening up, I would say, Josh, mm -hmm. between Charles Hall and Leon Morel. Yeah, so now perhaps Hall's got his uh, tyres fully up to temperature and he's well aware what Leon Morel can do here at St. Atherton. We haven't seen this at least at the last couple of meetings at Anglesey and Croft. Uh, Donington Park had a bit of mixed weather conditions, really, didn't it, there, where we had uh, some more strange uh, results. But Charles Hall, who's won four times out of six this season, then getting away. Meanwhile, there are battles uh, further down the order as well. We had a brief glimpse there of Kenzie Beecroft making his uh, debut in bikes. What's his drop to the back as well with a, a problem over the course of the previous lap. He's gained a couple of positions ahead of Richard Gilman and Dominic Langdon down for the leader. The gap's only six tenths of a second still. Uh, so this is not over yet, I don't think, as far as Leon Morel is concerned. As they come down, here he comes, down, down the inside, into the hairpin. This time Hall sees him coming and therefore is able to defend off the attentions of Leon Morel. So Morel is doing a great effort here to take it to the leader. He's uh, from Nottingham. Is uh, Morel there in 35? We only started racing a few seasons ago after competing in radio control cars, but it's been very quick in this radical SR3 over the last few seasons. This car that's prepared by Valor Racing, right on the tail, underneath the beer wing of Charles Hall, the leader. Great race, this isn't it, between these two, and it's been carried out at such a frenetic pace 150. 318, the best lap of the race so far, which is slower than qualifying and outside the lap record, but still pretty quick, it has to be said. Good race going on here. Uh, and I was just checking, they've both got seven starters within their class, so they both should be picking up the maximum available points, which hasn't always been the case this season. I think only on one occasion so far has Leon Morel actually been able to pick up the, the, the maximum 15 points for win because he's not had enough starters within his class at previous races. But uh, should both be able to pick up uh, good points here, which is important as the championship is now in its second half. 12-round uh, championship, six rounds have gone by. Two races here. Uh, Brands Hatch and the Silverstone Grand Prix circuit will round out the season. Into Corum, the really long right hander, and in these downforce cars, it's flat out all the way through the corner. Nothing can separate the two of them. They're down the brakes, down the gears, into the left hander at Murray's, and then accelerating again. This is where the Mattel has proved to be a little bit quicker down the straights, but Morel in the toe is able not to fall too far away as we complete four laps with half a second between them. They're both in the 53s on that lap. We didn't see a positional change on that lap, but we're on to. Uh, the fifth lap, and that time Hall carries a lot of speed through Richie's, and is that enough to keep him far enough ahead of Morel into Wilson? It is, but then later on the break, that is where Morel is certainly better in and brings himself right back with the leader again. Yeah, he does very little to choose between them around the lap. Oh, and he's pushing hardly on Morel. He got the car sideways there, going into Palmer. Didn't really lose too much time as a result of that, but he very nearly lost it, I thought. Uh, on that particular occasion, so he is right on the limit, I would suggest, trying to cling on with Charles Hall, who possibly just looks a little bit less flustered. Yes, uh, we will see uh, how the remainder of this race goes. It's a 20-minute race, we're not yet halfway, and again, Morel on the inside into Oggies. He can't quite make that work this time, which he did a couple of laps ago. Ever since then, I think Charles Hall, as well as us, have been very much... Uh, aware of what may come it's not the race perhaps we were expecting but it's certainly a race we're enjoying someone that's not enjoying themselves is andy fido after that spin he's into the pit lane and he is heading back out after being stopped with his team but he's uh, dropped a lap behind the pack so charles hall it is number 77 that still leads from number 35 leon morel in second place in third position it's number 73 alistair smart fourth is number 11 philip brown in fifth is number five to carter and sixth is number 93, Stephen Larkin, as we are coming up towards the halfway point in this race. As we watch, that's, was that Ben Scrivens we just saw on the screen there in eighth, just chasing after Stephen Bell. Uh, and that is the battle that's going on. We're going to get a position change here, I think, as Ben Scrivens in the invitation class almost managed to get up the inside of Stephen Bell, but couldn't quite make that work up at Brundle. Yeah, that's uh, one of the radical pro sports, one of the earlier cars from Cambridgeshire, from Peterborough. About an hour and a half away from uh, from Snetterton here, these uh, radical sports cars 
built. Although they've got a new factory at Donington Park, haven't they, uh, nowadays. Charles Hall sets a new fastest lap, a 1 minute 30 uh, with 52.3, an average of 95 miles per hour. Still Alistair Smart in third position. Uh, from Doug Carter's uh, start where he lost a couple of positions, he's not regained anything, has he? He's still behind Philip Brown. But that battle between Ben Shrivens and Steve Bell continues up towards Ritchie's. Shrivens, I don't think we've really seen Razor Radical before. Uh, it's certainly not in bike sports. It's going uh, pretty well and he's enjoying the battle. But the battle for the lead continues. We're heading towards that... Uh, Left-hander at Hamilton, such a quick corner. And uh, Hall seems to just have the better of morale there. It's the brakes where the Radical is better and is able to get himself right back on terms then with race leader Charles Hall as they turn then through Williams. This is where the aero wash will be a problem for the car that he's chasing, but then he will get the benefit of a slipstream down the Bentley Strait up towards the Brundle Nelson S's. Uh, which is a tricky corner because through the left-hander, which is very quick, you have to then start thinking about slowing the car down for the right-hander at uh, Nelson as they work their way out of there. And then through the very quick uh, next couple of corners, more battles going on behind those. Steve Bell has been passed by Ben Shrivens and now has Andrew Gord closing uh, in on the back of him. So just uh, Kenzie Beekoff's made a couple of places back, hasn't he? Up to uh, 11th position, I notice which is good to see as we are coming to the end of lap six there's a single digit car getting a driving standards flag so that could be either Doug Carter or Ben Scrivens or Richard Gilman because they're the only three single digit drivers in the race uh, Charles Hall still leading by just over half a second from uh, Leon Morello who just did his personal best lap actually on the previous lap and the fastest lap off the yes. race overall a 1 minute 52.14 which is only 7 tenths of a second out of Stefano Lini's lap record that is from some time ago as well um, some 6 years six ago yeah. so that is uh, pretty impressive despite being involved in a battle for Morello going very quickly uh, they are now 16 seconds ahead of Alistair Smart, who is looking for his third podium of the season. He scored a couple of podiums um, at uh, one at Croft and one at Donington Park, actually, earlier in the season. But he's running third again today and ahead of Philip Brown. Then Carter and Stephen Larkin going well, the Northern Irishman. He's there in sixth. We saw him out at Anglesey earlier in the season and got a better result of seventh there. So he's going one better today with a larger grid here at Snetterton. He's a regular winner in the Northern Ireland, Northern Ireland Road Sports Championship up there at Kirkston. It's uh, Stephen Larkin, but good to have him on the bike sports grid uh, this weekend and earlier in the season, as Josh was saying. So there are the leaders heading into Brundle once again. A bit more of a gap between them. It was just about six tenths of a second at the start of the lap. Well, <laughs> I say that. It looked like it was more going in, but then coming out... Uh, it was a bit less because I think uh, Liam Riley carried a lot of speed in but couldn't necessarily sort of carry that through the, the, the entire sequence and he's back to uh, a few good few tenths behind the race leader again. Yeah, going back to Larkham, it's one thing travelling over for Anglesey, it's another one for Snapperton, isn't Absolutely. it? Absolutely. On totally the other side of the country. Uh, there's Andrew Gord. I don't think we've seen huge amounts of Andrew this season, if at all, actually. So good to see him back out with us. He's having this battle with Stephen Bell, who's been a long-time 750 Motor Club competitor, going back to the RGB days in front engine cars and uh, running with Tim Gray Motorsports, uh, another long-standing team here in the, with 750 Motor Club. New fastest lap again for Liam Morrell. 151.91, but Charles Hall did a 151.98 that time through, so... Very little to choose between them. This is the battle for 10th and 11th. It includes Kenzie Beecroft in the number 14 car. He is trying to get a place back ahead of the number 24 Radical PR6 of, uh, of Ian Charles there, the driver from Farnborough. But Kenzie Beecroft, first time we've seen him out in the 750 Motor Club Bike Sports Championship. Had a disappointing start to the race, but seems to be coming back quite strongly now. Looking to get up into the top 10 here in two different classes these cars and the sr3 is a much bigger and less wieldy car really than the than the pr6 yeah much a later car as well this uh, one for benzie quickly crop a, a very late uh, rsx which i think is the previous generation of car because michael have brought a new one out uh, over the last 12 months or so he's a 33 year old engineer from london uh, with the rj motorsport squad and he continues uh, to chase uh, 
there. And Ian Charles, who's been, a, again, a, a pretty much a regular over the seasons within Bike Sports. We haven't seen so much of him this year, so good to see him out uh, this weekend at uh, Snetterton. And over the beginning of the lap, he's putting a little bit of daylight between himself and uh, Kenzie Beecroft. There's five minutes of the race to go, and they are on now on their seventh lap, a lap which uh, shortly will be completed by the leader because these two are half a lap just over behind. And it's absolutely together, it's still for the lead, by the way. <laughs> so Charles Hall cannot shake off the attentions of Liam Morrell. He's gone faster again, a 151.44 that time and through. That, that equals Lini's lap record to yeah. the hundredth of a second which is uh, pretty impressive because Stefano Lini was very rapid indeed and I think won the championship that year. Yeah, he was a benchmark, wasn't he? And went on to race in uh, single-seaters, has the outright lap record at Castle Coombe, set in Formula 3, so no mean pilot, Stefano Lini. As we're continuing to watch this battle for 10th place, Ian Charles, number 24, you can see how much wider the uh, SR3 RSX car of uh, Kenzie Beecroft is than the sort of uh, PR6 with the central seat driving position, wherever it's... Uh, the uh, driving position is to the right-hand side in the RS3 RSX, but uh, around a lap it seems like there's not too much to choose between these two. Kenzie Beecroft, to I think, dabbled with single-seaters in his youth. Um, not yet able to find a way through as he makes his bike sports debut uh, this weekend. How long have we got left in this place? Only about four minutes left now, Josh. Yeah, so the leader has crossed the line. Probably three laps to go. Uh, so these two continue on their battle, Ian Charles versus Be uh, Kenzie Beecroft, who hasn't, I don't think, gone as quick as he managed in qualifying this morning. So learning uh, racing is different to qualifying. And he's now looking to make progress on the run down towards the hairpin. He's on the inside line of Ian Charles and finally claims 10th position then ahead of the PR6 Radical. He does, so he's about 16 seconds behind Andrew Gort, though, so I think it's unlikely he's going to make up uh, any more positions during the course of this race, because only probably a couple of laps or so to go for them. As, uh, we've got uh, the leaders back over the line again with three minutes to go, so yes, they'll get two more laps out of this. These cars will get sort of two and a half more laps out of it. Yeah, that's, uh, that's right, they won't be caught by the leaders and Charles Hall has now got the fastest lap, a 1 minute 50.52 but Liam Morrell sets a new class B lap record, 1 minute 51.06 so the speed continues to increase as the fuel load comes down and the cars get lighter because uh, these are some of the lightest cars racing today as the fuel gets burnt off, uh, the ratio I guess uh, decreases, the weight ratio decreases quicker than other cars, like saloon cars. There they are then, the two leaders heading down towards Agostini with possibly the biggest gap we've seen between the two of them as Charles Hall increases his pace. They have the Dominic Langdon down, Radical SR3 uh, to lap shortly. The driver from Kent, who only started racing a few years ago in the Hayabusa engined uh, Radical SR3 prepared by RJ Motorsport. Uh, Josh Smith's Outfit and is this going to affect Charles Hall because he's caught him in an awkward position through the Williams right hander? Well, down the Bentley straight now, so it should be good for certainly Charles Hall to get through. Is uh, Leon Morel going to make it past that slower car as well? Climb 14th position uh, just about. It took a bit longer than I thought it might do. So it is still Charles Hall uh, leading the way then. Dominic Langdon down going uh, fairly well here because uh, sometimes we see him sort of languishing a little bit further off the pace, but yes. he's not fallen that far behind at all. He's only 10 seconds behind Richard Gilman, so I'm sure Dom, I think he's raced here, but it's actually more than other places, and be uh, quite pleased with that. Not had to worry about uh, faster cars too much until just now. Uh, ben Shrivens, who was, what, well inside the top 10, has not come through complete nine laps. Yeah, he's tumbling down the timing screen, isn't he? So that blue... Uh, Radical Pro Sport, I think, is stopped somewhere out on the circuit, possibly. Let's see if we can pick that up, but uh, yeah, he's not come through in the invitation class, of course, so not scoring points. But we're on the last lap of the race now, and the leader's down at the Wilson Hairpin. Charles Hall leading by just over one second now as they go on to this final lap. So it looks like the overall result is probably settled. I think both drivers realise that. They've had a good race, and it's very good in the early stages, but class points are now what's needed. I suspect Leo Morel will now have a little bit of a championship head on. 
let's see. <laughs> we have half a lap to go and more traffic potentially to deal with because Richard Gilman just up the road in his uh, radical SR3, as a, a number of the cars are. Um, probably the, the largest uh, number of cars built with a motorcycle engine uh, in. So if they ca oh, it's okay. oh um, Morel is not backing off, is he? Because he was really sliding the car there through the right-hander at Williams. Now, if they catch this slower car at an awkward place for Hall, that uh, could hold him up. Let's see, into the S's, into Brundle and Nelson. But, yeah, that big slide from Morel has lost him time. Hall, mm. though, feels the need to dive up the inside of Gilman, and that's really, I think, giving it uh, to him. But for third position, Alistair Smart, who was eight seconds ahead of Philip Brown, has been caught here. Yeah, now, has he had a spin or something like that out of our sight? But that's uh, all of a sudden very close indeed for third position. There's the race leader, Charles Hall, who's coming through Corum for the final time. He's a lot further ahead now of Leon Morel. But is Philip Brown going to be able to get the place away from Alistair Smart? They're about to head onto the Bentley Strait as well. So we've got uh, the race leader about to head up to the chequered flag, and he takes it now. Charles Hall gets the win then from Leon Morel in second place. The gap in the end, two and a half seconds, 2.45 seconds between them. But just looking to see, you can see what's going on with the battle further back between Alistair Smart and Philip Brown, which was quite a long way behind the uh, the leaders in the end. Brown's had one podium this year, which came at Anglesey, which we had earlier. Smart had the two. Smart is ahead as they go into Corum now, and uh, Brown right on the tail underneath the rear wing of Alistair Smart, and here they are. Yeah, through Murray's then for the final time. It's going to be a dash to the flag for... Uh, Philip Brown, if he could make it, still don't know quite how the eight-second lead for or advantage for Alistair Smart evaporated, but it did, and it just comes across the line in third place, number 73, second place within Class A. Philip Brown fourth overall, and second in uh, Class B. Then Doug Carter number five, and Stephen Larkin number 93 round out the top six. Yeah, Stephen Larkin pretty much caught Doug Carter by the end as well, and that was a, a larger gap earlier in the race. There's Steve Bell, and he will complete the podium within Class B, won't he, there in seventh position, holding off uh, the attention of Andrew Gordon. Again, that gap came down as the, the race went on. So that was a, a pretty good race, actually, from the Bike Sports Championship. It was, and a new lap record within Class B as well for Leon Morel at 151.06, taking uh, nearly four tenths off Stefano Lini's lap record from six years ago. Uh, and Charles Hall getting the victory then by 2.45 seconds. Here is confirmation of that result. Uh, so 77 Charles Hall, the winner from number 35, Leon Morel in second place. Then third, about three quarters of a minute behind, was number 73, Alistair Smart. Fourth, number 11, Philip Brown. Then to Carter and Stephen Larkin, fifth and sixth. Stephen Bell was seventh, number 86. Eighth was number 60, Andrew Gord. Ninth was 14, Kenzie Beecroft. And rounding out the top 10 was number 24, Ian Charles, head of Mark Grayson, Richard Gilman. Dominic Langdon down and Andrew Fido uh, a non-finisher, as was Ben Scriffies.